So, uh, my name is Mike Fox, and I'm here, obviously, to talk about accessibility. <laughs> um, this is kind of a important topic to me personally, but also to your users, whether you're a developer, you know, front end, back end, full stack, whatever. It's actually something that is pretty important for literally everyone. But I'm jumping ahead of myself. So, first off, <laughs> a bit about me. <laughs> so, first and foremost, I am a developer. I've done all kinds of native stuff on Windows and Linux. I've done retro systems. We were talking about that old pizza earlier. And of course, the web, which is why we're all here. <laughs> Uh, I'm also a blogger. You might have seen in the meetup information where Chris talked about my accessibility challenge, where I challenged my readers to unplug their mouse and try and use whatever they're building. I bet you can do that. You'll find some things that uh, might need a little work. Hopefully not, but <laughs> just saying. Because not everyone is able to use a mouse. Um, anyway, on my blog I talk about mostly technology, but also some hockey stuff and obviously just random, you know, sci-fi movies and geek stuff. So geekonskates.com <laughs> makes sense. And this is an interesting one. A lot of people, you know, you look at me, you may or may not be able to figure it out, but I am legally blind or visually impaired, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> so I'm not totally blind, but I do use what's called assistive technology, or AT for short, to get stuff done. And we'll get into some of that later. And yeah, that was more like a few bites, but whatever. <laughs> So, you know, what is accessibility? Obviously, I got the Wikipedia definition up there. And it talks about developing software, services, solutions for people with disabilities. I'm not really a huge fan of that definition, mostly because it's not just for people with disabilities. Again, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, but what's interesting is a lot of the things that help people with disabilities also helps everybody else. <laughs> anyway, this includes, a lot of people too think it's just for guys like me who don't see well or don't see at all, but it is for everyone. People who are deaf, people who are hard of hearing, people who can't use their hands or have certain cognitive disabilities, whatever. It is all inclusive. Which really, from a design standpoint, that should be your first clue it's inclusive design for everybody. And I'm getting way ahead of myself. <laughs> so, uh, what is assistive tech? You might have heard me here fighting with the display, <laughs> uh, trying to get this computer to connect to the display. And the computer was actually talking at me. No, it was not calling me names. <laughs> I have a screen reader which actually speaks what's on the screen. I'll get into that later. But there's also what they call a screen magnifier. So if you'll allow me to turn that on for just a second. Yeah, how's that for uh, <laughs> big text? You can see, I can only see a small area of the screen at a time, which makes hover menus really annoying. <laughs> um, but it also means that if I want to, I can zoom in as much as I need to on literally anything. So this is kind of where, where I've been getting ahead of myself, is all about this slide, because really when you get away from the code stuff, and we will be getting into some code, 
when you get, when you step away from the code stuff, accessibility is important for everybody. And for a few reasons. First and foremost, you end up basically having you end up with more leads, more business or more publicity or whatever the act you're building for your customer. So yeah, I mean, if people who are, like let's say, real cheesy example that I'm going to use a few times too many, PizzaHut.com. So if you can't use that site, first of all, that's a bunch of money that's not going to Pizza Hut. <laughs> and in my case, a bunch of money. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and secondly, there are people actually getting sued over this. I personally find that kind of ridiculous and taking it too far, but it really makes sense. And, and I'll cover that more towards the end. Um, but the big, the big ones are really kind of in the middle there. It's not just for people with disabilities. I don't know how many of you have kids or you know wives or whatever, but if you ever can't sleep or something, want to watch a movie, don't want to wake them up, closed captions could be a helpful thing. There are standards that talk about the reading level and how complex your, your text is, and that has nothing to do with code or anything. Well, who doesn't want clear, simple, understandable, easy to read text? <laughs> In other words, if it's user friendly for this group of people, you're actually helping everybody. And I have a few other examples there that I cannot recall and cannot see from here. <laughs> but you get the point. At least I hope you do. <clears throat> so, I guess the big thing is I need to figure out what the <laughs> And this, this is the part I've been looking forward to. Because, you know, I think a lot of people hear about accessibility, don't really know how to put it into practice. And we will get into some code stuff today. I don't want to be too code heavy, but there are some really general tips here. Obviously, don't go reinventing the wheel. It might be kind of fun to mess with some new framework and build your own date picker and, you know, HTML5 has a big input type. <laughs> There's no need to that's already been done, and has been done with accessibility in mind. So it actually saves you work and makes things easier on the users who just use what HTML5 provides. But even then, there are standards, and I have W3C's uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG for short. That is the weirdest acronym, WCAG. <laughs> Sounds like something like, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it's on w3.org. I actually have links to all of these that I'll gladly share with everyone who reads it. And WCAG kind of dictates every little thing that you need to make a site accessible. I'm just touching on a few basic things here. WCAG is like everything, mm -hmm. they've broken it down into different levels. Different things of the intent of each thing, and like really deep dots on every little thing. And if you feel the need to make up your own widget, there's another spec called ARIA, Accessible Rich Internet Applications. And we'll actually see some ARIA here in a sec. So yeah, these are just the links to everything I was just talking about. <clears throat> now, let's get into some code stuff. <laughs> let's build our own custom widget, this button. <laughs> yeah, so what you can see in the code, it's an image element with an on-click event. <coughs> I can click on it and it does something. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, I might not use for showing. <laughs> so this looks cool, relatively cool. I'm part of a designer. And works. <laughs> but it's got a couple of pretty big problems. First thing is keyboard support. If you can't use a mouse, you can't use our new widget. <laughs> And this is a really like stupid simple way. It's a button. So there's a few things we can do here. This tab index equals zero just means as users are hitting tab to go through the page, eventually it should come to this button. It puts it in what's called the tab order or the focus order. And then of course on key down event to match the on click event. But there's one more problem. Because <laughs> now it's like, okay, so it's, we can use it with or without a mouse. And mouse support is a good thing. Despite my jokes about the accessibility challenge, I'm not knocking mouse support. Obviously, a lot of people use it. But when you have both, now it's like, let's say I forgot my mouse. I won't mess with this weird touchpad thing. It's keyboard. The next thing here is screen reader support. Now screen readers are those things I was talking about that literally speaks what's on the screen. So we added a couple of things here. Uh, let me go back. In fact, if you don't mind, I actually need to sit down and do this demo so I can <laughs> type. Did everyone hear that okay? That was a little quick. Yeah, that was a little quick. I'm not about to go messing with the settings, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and yes, people like people who use screen readers. <coughs> we all listen to it that fast because we had to listen to this for eight hours a day, ten hours a day, however long it takes to get that last bug fixed or that last feature in. <laughs> you don't want to be spending ten minutes listening to. Intro to accessibility. Yeah. <laughs> and from this robotic voice in the default voice. So, yeah. so now when I hit tab, like I said, we have keyboard support, which is great. It just said image. Hmm. Because we used an image tag. And that's all screen readers are ever going to see it as an image. So it has no label. And it misreads it. It's not really a button. But this is where that R in the thing comes in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, reading code with the screen reader is always fun. <laughs> so now we've added roll equals button. See, again, it's not super complicated, but it takes some research, it takes some figuring out. Like, okay, if I use this roll attribute, I can tell it this is a button. <laughs> and aria label equals go, because that's what's on the image in the button. So now when I hit tab to go to it, it says go push button. Bingo. And I can hit it. No problem. So that's our whole widget. It's a stupid, simple widget. <laughs> This little experiment. Wait, it's A B. The hard one. Alt go. Yeah. So Alt is the text alternative. You can also use yeah. Aria dash label there. Oh, okay, that's why I was confused. Yeah, I guess yeah. I, I was thinking because normally if I'm building a widget, I would use Aria label. Mm -hmm. But since it's an image, Alt really is a better fit. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I mean, that feels way better. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's funny. You know, 20 years of accessibility being a thing on the web, and still don't know how to do alt text. I've literally seen alt equals alt text. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a PHP meetup, so we got to see some PHP, dang it. Now, this is a. <laughs> if you're new to PHP and you just 
us know the bare bones basics of functions and loops and arrays. Even if you don't know that, even just like functions and echo, this should make sense. So I have this function show image or show graphic that is basically just outputting text on the screen. And we pass it a, we pass the image a half. And if you want it, you pass it a description. If you notice, there's a conditional statement in there that if you don't pass it a description, it sets role equals presentation. Presentation, I don't know why they chose that word, but it basically means decoration. <coughs> it's just going to look cool. And rule of cool is totally a thing. <laughs> I've seen, you know, icons and photos and even like little images, smiley faces and bullets and all kinds of things people do. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but if it's not meant to be anything people should like know about, there's no information there. We set the alt text to an empty string. That by itself is enough, but then you really want to hammer the point home to make sure the screen reader knows to ignore it. <laughs> Roll equals presentation. So below that I have a couple examples. <laughs> I have two images, my dog and my blog. <laughs> Obviously my dog would just be a picture. It's just there because it's a cool picture. There's no information in it, there's no whatever. But let's say my blog is actually my dog's logo or you know something that is actually worth screen readers reading. Then we want to put a description there. So again, some people say, well, all this is just good old text, so I'll do all equals all text here. <laughs> but there's a lot of little considerations like this. And the more you get to know the WCAG standards, and the more you get to know ARIA, eventually it becomes <coughs> like the field. And in this case, the second image is actually a link. So yeah, you have a link just an image. That image has no text. That screen reader would just say link. Not link. Some some screen readers on Windows, I know one that might say link file slash slash images slash my blog dot png. What user wants to hear that? <laughs> so yeah, the bottom line of this is You know, accessibility really comes down to HTML. I can get into things like PHP frameworks and templating engines like Twig and you know all these other things that are available. Even JavaScript frameworks, Dumb Jones is one for accessibility. I mean, a lot of things. I've seen people do some really great stuff in React. But it's possible to build things that are accessible or not with literally anything, server side, client side. Doesn't really matter because the end result is always HTML. And if you notice, how much easier would it have been in our little button experiment if we just did a button tag, put the text inside, go, and then on click? And you don't even need an on key down because browsers know, hey, this is a button, or on click, maybe work with keyboards. <laughs> That would have been saved a lot of work and a lot of confusion because most people don't know this stuff. Even if you're a developer who's been doing it for 20 years, it's just kind of foreign and kind of strange. And I realize we've been info dumping on you these past 10 minutes. <laughs> but moving on. There's one last thing that I want to say, and part of the reason that I know accessibility so well, and that I can ramble on and on like this for 15, 20 minutes on a subject that's probably totally alien to most of you guys, is because I work at a company that is very accessibility and just focuses on accessibility. And 
like I said, there are people getting sued over it, which I kind of think is ridiculous, but it's happening. And people are using the WCAG standards and saying this thing doesn't meet the WCAG standards, and so it doesn't meet ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. And I kind of get it, because, yeah, a person you know, can't get to your building with a wheelchair, there's a problem there. If someone can't buy whatever on your website, there's a problem there. But you know, this company, Lighthouse Works, we got out in front of it, we actually got a team of analysts that uh, do accessibility audits. And when you're done, if you pass, there's even a cool like site seal that you can put on there to say, yes, we've done our due diligence, we're, you know, we know we're accessible because we have a bunch of people who are blind and visually impaired that know this stuff inside out and backwards. Look at our site and verify that we are. Here's a site that we built. And you can see the site seal in the lower right hand corner. We have a lot of sites where that have met the standards and they are rocking the site seal. But the main reason I wanted to show you this was just to push our you know, lighthouse accessibility testing. The main thing I wanted to show you is, yes, you can meet every single nano detail of the standards and still look really cool. <laughs> this app is a referral, it's for uh, eye doctors to be able to refer their patients to services for the blind. Now you saw my cheesy 90s looking presentation that I coded together in a couple weeks. This is what our designer built. <laughs> I did the PHP, I did the database and the you know MVC code and all that, you know. But our front end guys did the UI and oh my gosh, yeah. I just look at this background and the fancy shadows and whatever. With a screen reader? It's simple, easy to understand. You just log in, do your thing, and you're done. So, uh, after this 15 to 20 minute info dump, again, sorry about that. Do you guys have any questions or anything you want to add? Well, so what exactly is Tavia? Is that something that's <laughs> Somewhere? Is that a framework? Or? No, that's a good question. Um, and I, I should have gotten into that a bit more. So ARIA is actually a standard. It is an HTML5. It's kind of baked into HTML5. So things like role equals button and then ARIA label equals it. You don't need any frameworks for that. Okay. It's literally just part of it. And it's actually maintained by the W3C. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's about as lightweight as a framework gets. <laughs> so it's literally just part of the browser. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a question. Oh, sorry, Billy. Have you guys built any automation that helps with testing for accessibility, anything like that? We do use a lot of automation, <laughs> but it's not really for testing so much as, well, let me, let me back up. For that app we built, absolutely. <laughs> That's unit testing, you know. Um, Is this going to be for accessibility or anything? Or yeah, what? so Lighthouse Works actually has a, the whole, their whole focus is empowerment through employment. Cool. So they employ people who are blind or visually impaired. We have a call center. Sometimes our call center, you know, has clients who want us to use their inaccessible software, <laughs> which is, you know, understandable but not always the most efficient thing. For example, we have a telephony platform. You know, these guys, they got their email open, they got their Excel open, Word. <coughs> a call comes in, they have to press Alt-Tab until they get to the right thing, and then hit Tab a bunch of times to hit the Answer button. No, no, no. Our automation code basically is, we set it up so they can just hit Shift-Control-A, hello, welcome to the insert customer here. So we use automation to kind of bridge the gaps in software that is not accessible. 
And that does use a lot of automation technology, getting to things like UIA on Windows or, you know. Um, oh, I think I'm, I'm so sorry. I yeah, no, it was a good, I, it was a good answer. I, I completely sure. had no idea what But like for, you know what I'm saying, like the, the, the test process, process is accessible. Yes, in fact, I think I actually mentioned something in the slides and it totally slipped my mind or I didn't see it. Uh, there's a tool called AXE, A-X-E. Oh, yeah. It is created by a company called DQ. And it is a Firefox and Chrome extension that you can use literally as you're building your page just run this tool and see what issues there are, and it shows you how to fix it. So before you would go to us for an audit, you can just do a lot of it yourself. Now, automated tools are not the whole solution. Like, for example, Axe can check if images have alt text, but it can't check if the alt text makes any sense, like alt equals alt text. <laughs> It just sees, well, you know, what's the image? Oh, this one has alt text on one. So there's definitely a manual part to that, which is why anytime I do a talk like this, I'm kind of asked to at least bring it up because there's not a lot of people doing that, especially for smaller businesses. Like, yeah, you could probably get DQ to do it for <laughs> five or six digits, but. You know, for the for the average Joe company with startups and things, uh, you've actually you found a real sort of niche there. And automated tools are absolutely an important part of the testing process. Um, my focus here is I'm more on for you guys as developers because that's who we are and that's the whole point of this meetup. But really good question. And I'm sorry I misunderstood. Uh, anything else? <laughs> I have a silly question. What's, sure, what's, the, what's the weirdest alt text you've ever read about? <laughs> <laughs> I have found many, many weirder problems than alt text because early on in the process they had me doing a lot of the audits, which again, when I still help out, I still kind of you know, double check people's work and stuff. Alt text is the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> I think the funniest one that I ever saw. And I won't mention the company's name, obviously. It was a board game, it's a popular board game. They had a joke item in their cart for $100. <laughs> Across the screen, they had a big moving image with no alt text that said, do not buy this. <laughs> and if you clicked add to cart, the cart would show <laughs> what have you done. Again, no alt text. <laughs> So screen reader would just get image, image, image when <laughs> some important information there. Which kind of goes back to what I was saying about alt text isn't just there to be there. There's an actual purpose to it. The whole scrolling and bouncing around like a MySpace marquee, and there's a couple other standards that get wrapped into that one. <laughs> some people can't even read that thing if it moves around that, you know, way it looks. What about um, now the new technology, like you can say this is a picture of a dog. I mean, could that like maybe help somebody like tag their images and like, you know, add that in? I think those are great tools and I actually know how a lot of that works because I get into some computer vision stuff <laughs> as well. But I think, I mean, for users, absolutely. For us as developers, sure, go ahead and use it, but you might want to double check. <laughs> I think one funny example I got on that one was people sitting at a table, and it was a Halloween event, so it was people sitting at the table in a Halloween costume, <laughs> and there was no mention of Halloween anywhere in that thing. The algorithm just thought, oh, there's a table, I see people, here's eyes, <laughs> in a mouth, and there's people sitting at a table. <laughs> yeah, what's a witch and a vampire and Captain America? <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, yeah. All right, well, thank you guys so much for your time.